people are there to be entertained or to solve a problem. And if you have a product or a business that solves problems, you can just create a simple, uh, you know, one minute video or a two minute video, and you can get it in front of your exact audience. Um, and you can track that whole, that whole sales process. Search social and mobile. These are the agents of change. Welcome to the weekly podcast where we unravel the mysteries behind digital marketing so that you can succeed and grow your business. And now your host, Rich Brooks. My name is Rich Brooks, and you're listening to the Agents of Change podcast, the podcast for marketers and entrepreneurs everywhere trying to make sense of digital marketing. We're up to episode 248, and as always, this episode is powered by Flight New Media. Now, many of the companies that I work with have dabbled in Google AdWords, and even more have at least experimented with Facebook ads. Yet very, very few have played around with YouTube ads. Maybe it's because you don't want to get in front of the camera, or maybe you think the idea of creating video ads is too expensive, but whatever the case, this is a huge untapped opportunity for most small businesses just like yours. To help bridge that gap, we brought in Jake Larson, owner of Video Power Marketing, to talk to us about why YouTube advertising is so powerful and how you can get started with it. Before we get to that, just a quick message about the 7th Annual Agents of Change Digital Marketing Conference. Yes, tickets are on sale. Yes, it's possible that all the early bird tickets are gone. I'm recording this a couple, three weeks in advance, so I don't know. When I'm recording this, we were very close to selling out of those early bird tickets. That's the bad news for you. The good news is, even if we did sell out, the bottom line is we still have all these great discounts going on, so you can still save a lot of money on your ticket if you act now. I want you to head on over to theagentsofchange.com and check out the website, see what the prices are on those tickets, but even at full price, this is an amazing event. Let me break down how this year is a little different than in previous years. This year, the conference is on Thursday. That's the main event. Friday is a day of workshops. Now, you can buy a ticket to just the conference. You're still going to get some great content. But if you are looking for more, then definitely check out these Friday workshops. These are three-hour, in-depth workshops for marketers and entrepreneurs who are really looking to take their skills to the next level. Is that you? Maybe. If so, you should definitely check out the workshops. Now, we've got two tracks on the workshops. So we've got four presentations for workshops that go on on Friday, you can see up to two of them. So from 9 to 12, you have your choice of either a live video or doing live video with Joel Com or learning more about Pinterest with Jennifer Priest. Then we take a quick lunch break and then we're back at it. And from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., you can learn everything about Facebook ads. And this is going to be some advanced stuff too with Amanda O'Brien or Instagram with Jen Herman. The bottom line is we brought together four experts who are going to be teaching three-hour in-depth workshops, and those are available on Friday. Now, as you probably know, we have this conference in person and virtually. Now, the workshops are only going to be available in person, so if you want to sit down with these experts and really learn the business, then you're going to have to come up to Portland, Maine. Don't worry. September is the best time of year for Portland, Maine. It's gorgeous. Uh, These are going to be great events. They're limited size. You're really going to get a lot of hands-on and they're perfect. So again, live video, Pinterest, Facebook ads, and Instagram are the focus of the four workshops we're putting on this year. You can learn more at our website. These are going to be $199 a piece, these workshops. So this is an addition to the conference ticket. Uh, We do expect these to fill up quickly. So jump on those. And again, they're over at the Agents of Change website. Okay, let's Turn back to our interview for today and learn more about YouTube advertising with Jake Larson. After Google asked him to be a YouTube marketing ambassador, he quit his job a month before his first child was born to start Video Power Marketing, a video ad agency that has generated millions of dollars in trackable sales for their clients. Their unique way of advertising allows them to guarantee results, sales, leads, subscribers, directly related to their YouTube ad campaigns. I'm happy to have as a guest, Jake Larson. What's up, Rich? Happy to be here. 
Uh, I'm glad you're here, and, and it's a very exciting topic. I'm definitely interested in this. Uh, before we get to some of the questions on YouTube advertising, I, I guess I have to ask a question that came up as I was reading your bio. Let me get this straight. Google asked you to be a YouTube marketing ambassador, and you turned them down to start your own agency. Is that what went on? No, that that's actually it's it's through that it's through that uh, that that ambassador program that opened my eyes to the power of YouTube ads. So at the time, I was I was working with with the company uh, managing their YouTube channel and working with their marketing team, and we did such a good job of turning our YouTube viewers into <clears throat> into customers. Uh, they asked us to be an ambassador and they introduced us to this new way of advertising, which was YouTube ads back in 2012. I see. Um, and that, that's when like, that's when things started to click from it. Holy cow. <clears throat> we can guarantee views. We can see how long people are watching the video. If they're clicking, do they opt in? Do they purchase? And like, nobody was, uh, using this platform at the time. So I'm like, you know what? I got We can help a lot of people here. Um, and I ended up quitting my job and starting video power marketing as a result of that experience. So why are you so bullish on YouTube ads? Well, shortly because because they work. Um, they've got a huge audience. Everyone is on YouTube. They're all they're all looking for how to learn how uh, learn how to do whatever. Like I needed to catch a gopher the other day in my backyard, so I went on the YouTube. How do I how do I catch a gopher? So like there's there's it's intent based. People are there to be entertained or to solve a problem. And if you have a product or a business that solves problems, you can just create a simple, uh, you know, one minute video or a two minute video and you can get it in front of your exact audience. Um, and you can track that whole, that whole sales process. Um, you can, uh, you can see, uh, how they're engaging with the video. Are they opting in? Are they purchasing your products? And it kind of gives you instant feedback as to how well your messaging is or how well your product is. Uh, and if you know what you're doing, uh, you can get a positive return on ad spend. So for every dollar you spend on ads, you can get three dollars in sales, or four dollars in sales, or five dollars in sales, whatever that uh, that ROI is. So, in a way, your customers are funding your advertising expenses, and uh, and it becomes an an investment. All right. Now, video ads. Like I'm sure a lot of businesses hear phrases like video ads, and it they just think it's expensive, too expensive or too time consuming or more work than the typical small business can handle. Are they right? And if not, what do you say to people like that? Uh, I mean, yeah, it does take some time and it does take some money to figure out what that, com like that there's that combination of what's the right audience, what's the right message, what's, what's the right offer. Uh, but what gets really fun is when you, when you find that, that, that combination uh, and you can start to see those cells come in. Like you have this, this machine that, uh, that can, that can consistently gen generate you high quality leads and customers. And so when, when, when those results start that, when you start to see those results come in, um, I'm happy. I mean, if you, I'm happy to spend money on ads because I know I'm going to get a return on them. So it's just kind of, it's kind of a, it's a mindset switch and think at, in terms of thinking of advertising as an expense versus an investment. Um, I know I, I'll speak at several conferences and I'll ask, you know, how many people are, are, are currently advertising on Facebook and 95% of the hands go up. Uh, you know, everyone's advertising on Facebook and I'll ask, okay, how many people are advertising on YouTube? And, you know, maybe 5% of the hands go up. And, um, and I just, I see that as an opportunity, right? Like there's, there's not many people advertising effectively on YouTube. So the few people that enter, uh, enter there, uh, and put the time and effort and resources into learning that, that platform, they're going to, they're going to see the benefits. So tell us a little bit about the different types of advertising that we can do on YouTube. So there's two, there's two main types of, uh, of, of video ads on YouTube. And so when we talk about YouTube ads, we're talking about true view advertising. That's what it's called. It, it's, and this all happens within the Google AdWords platform. Um, the first one is dis, uh, discovery ads. So these are uh, ads that show up on the right hand side under suggested videos. Um, and so you're, you're paying to get that view and they watch the video and they watch the video right there on the YouTube channel. And then there's the, another type of ad called the in, their in stream ads. And these are the ones that you can skip after five seconds. Um, these ones are my favorite ads because of the way 
of the way it charges for a view. So when you're when you're writing an ad, uh, a YouTube in-stream ad, a view is if the viewer watches 30 seconds or half the ad, whichever comes first. So let's say you have a 60 second video and somebody watches till 29 seconds and says, you know what, it's not for me and they skip the ad. Well, you're not paying, as the advertiser, you're not paying for that because they didn't hit that 30 second threshold. Uh, so it saves you money and it also, it, it saves the, the, the viewer. Like the viewer doesn't, if the viewer's not interested in your ad, they'll skip it and, uh, and that's great for them because they're not, they're not wasting their time and you're not wasting your ad spend um, advertising uh, a video that people aren't interested in. So, um, yeah, those are the, those are the main two types of ads. All right. So you, a couple questions on that. So you said, uh, these are true view. What did you mean by that? So that, uh, the, true view is the name that, uh, Google ha has come up with their advertising platform. So if you go okay. into outside AdWords, you say, I want to create a true view campaign and that's like a YouTube ad. I see. Um, I, I really like, I really like the name because you're getting a true view. So like, you know, take TV for example. Like, if you're sp wasting money on TV at TV ads, you don't know if people are watching your ad or your your commercial or not. Um, if I see a commercial come up, my attention goes straight to my my phone, or I'm in another room. Like, as an advertiser, you have no idea how effective your your advertising is. That with YouTube, because you know people are at least watching it for 30 seconds you're getting a true view like you're, you have people's attention and that's what what's valuable that's the value that's the value add in today's advertising is the attention all right so true view is the advertising platform name just like adwords would be one or whatever the case is and within this we have two different directions we can go in one is these discovery ads so i'm watching a video on uh you know 11 things i missed in the new avengers movie and then up in the top right corner there could be an advertising for anything it could be related to the video i just watched or it could be because of who i am google knows who i am so somebody out there who wants to advertise things about camping and get in front of me and they know i like camping they can be one of those discovery ads which then i have to take an action and click on and then i watch their video and they pay at that point correct Exactly. Yep. Okay. Then there's the in-stream ads, which seem to be what you're most interested in, and that's uh, the s commercials that we can usually skip after five seconds when we want to get to that uh, all the Easter eggs I missed in the new Avengers movie type video. And that ad, like I've seen ones that are I can skip after five seconds and ones where I have to watch the entire ad. Do you have one? Do you recommend going with one over the other? Oh uh, yeah, I think you. I think you've got to go for the skippable ads. Um, and the reason why is, is do you really want to, do you really want to force people to watch, uh, an ad that they're not interested in or see an ad that they're not interested in? Um, when you allow people to, to continue watching or skip it, you get a higher quality view, you get higher quality clicks and thus like higher quality leads. Um, I just, I, I, Andrew, I guess you're not paying for every view either because you're it, only... if they skip, yeah, if they skip it, you're not paying for it. So it's a, it's a better quality view. All right. So I think you've kind of already answered this because I had a question of like, how do we actually get to the YouTube ad platform? But it sounds like it's through Google AdWords and then there's just the true view option once I get in there. Yep. So you go into Google AdWords and you go, I want to create a new campaign and it will ask you what kind of campaign you want to create a display campaign, a, a search campaign or a video campaign and you hit video campaign and then it gives you all the, it gives you the options all right there. Okay. So once we're, so we're in there, um, I know that one of the beautiful things about digital advertising is our ability to target our ideal customers. And I know Facebook, you know, has amazing tools. They, those may need to be rolled back depending on what happens at the Senate. Uh, but regardless, what kind of targeting opportunities do we have on YouTube? Um, there's, there's a lot. There's, there's some awesome tools. Some of my favorite ones um, right now, if you're just starting out, I recommend placements. So basically you can say, uh, Hey, you know what I have, uh, I'm looking to target, uh, entrepreneurs or people looking to grow their business. I want to show my video on other YouTube channels that talk about entrepreneurship or growing a business. So you, you can, you can, you can place your video on other videos that, that your audience would be watching. Um, that's again, it's, it's a, it's a smaller target, a smaller volume but it's, it's highly relevant to your audience and that performs well. Um, another, another 
one of my other favorite types of targeting right now is a similar to audience. Uh, this has been around on Facebook for a long time, but uh, it's all, I mean, it's not, not many people realize it's available for YouTube as well. But let's say you have a, a customer list, a customer email list, and you can upload that to AdWords and it creates a similar audience that says like, hey, these are the, these are the, this, these are the similar profiles and behaviors as your, as your customers. And based on Google's AI, we think that these, these other people would be interested in purchasing from you. Um, and it creates this similar to your customer email list. Um, if, you're just, if you're just starting out, I would recommend those two, those two targeting options um, and, and going that route. I think that's the quickest way to get, get great results. All right, so placements is more about choosing channels that target our ideal customer. And do we have to pick these out or does Google or do I just go in there and say, hey, listen, I'm looking to get in front of dog owners or small business owners or whatever the case, parents, whatever the case may be. And Google knows enough what those channels are about and will automatically do that. Or do I have to go find those channels myself? They give you two options. So um, I, uh, you can do both. Both ways work. Um, I recommend kind of doing the research manually and seeing like, you know, which channels have the most subscribers, uh, you know, that bigger audience and how relevant are they. And then I'll just copy and paste that you, that, that uh, channel URL into the targeting uh, section in the campaigns and go that way. Um, another option though, if you don't, if you haven't done that is you can, you know, type in keywords that, that are related to specific channels and, and YouTube the, their kind of auto feature will kind of come up with other channels that they, they think would be relevant um, for those base that they think would be relevant based on those keywords that you type in. And then, so the similar to seems more like uh, it's more in line with Facebook it, where we're targeting people based on specific demographics. So it's more about targeting the people versus targeting the channels. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Yep. And I've heard something where I can actually hand pick certain videos that I want my uh, my video to be in front of my video yeah. ad. Is that something also so, that's part of placements? So that's 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 a placement target. And again, instead of target targeting the whole YouTube channel, you're targeting specific videos, and that works well too. Um, and 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 I want to mention this because this is this is brand new. This is uh, new within the last like month or two. Uh, but they have what they call custom intent audiences. So these are people who would be searching for uh, something on Google. So that you know, how do I grow a business? How can I build out my team? There are specific uh, keywords that people are searching on Google, and then then you can show your an ad on YouTube based on what they're what they're searching for. Uh, in Google. And that's, that's been pretty powerful too. So let me walk through that. So I'm online and I'm doing a Google search on how to catch a gopher. Was it a gopher you were having problems with? Yep. All right. Uh -huh. And, but I'm not at YouTube, but then like maybe uh -huh. a day or two later I'm on YouTube and suddenly I start seeing ads because Google can track me from my Google search over to my YouTube, correct? Correct. And as long as you're logged into the Google platform, right. it can draw that connection. Interesting. All right. That's pretty cool too. Uh, all right. So now I know how I can kind of target my audience. By the way, there's also, I know in Facebook, you can upload email lists and things like that and then target people based on that. Is there any similar functionality uh, within YouTube for that at this point? Yeah. So that's that similar to audience. That's a similar to. Okay. That's a, instead of a, instead of calling it a custom audience, it's, it's a similar to audience on all right, Google. awesome. So we can definitely use the database of emails that we've been collecting since we've started our business because email is important. Excellent. All For right. Sure. So uh, once we've done that, uh, another big piece, and I think one of the things that a, a lot of people listening are most concerned about is the actual creative itself, like creating a video that's going to get people to engage with our brand and to click through and get them to some sort of landing page. Do you do this for your customers and clients? Is this something that you have some advice on, the kind of videos that we should be creating that work well on YouTube? For sure. I know with our, with our clients, we do both. Some clients already have videos created, and, and other times we need to help them pr produce that video. Um, in terms of what that video should include, I, I kind of have a, a five-step formula that I, that I try and follow. I love five-step formulas. Hit me. So... 
So the the step step one is that is is grabbing their attention, right? Like you have five seconds uh, before somebody decides to skip that ad, uh, and you want to make sure that you attract the the ideal person. So let's let's go with that. Um, let's go with like that entrepreneurs that entrepreneur thing. Like let's say you have a program that helps people uh, build their business. You can say, hey, you know, you're seeing this ad because because YouTube thinks you're an entrepreneur. Uh, if you're not, feel free to skip this ad. Uh, and so you can kind of like get get kind of crafty like that and uh, and attract that right that right client. So that way, if somebody's not an entrepreneur and they're not looking to grow their business, they like, you know what, this isn't for me. They'll skip it, and you're not wasting your ad's money. So grabbing their attention is the first step, and then introducing the, the problem. Like there, everyone has problems. Uh, they have challenges, and if you can address those challenges, like you know, one of the big the hardest things about growing a business uh, is finding your customers, and you can kind of just inter- like connect with your audience and relate that to them. So introduce the problem. Then the third step is, uh, I call it credibility or connection. This is this is where you're answering the question, what gives you the right to be advertising this? Or what gives you the right to be making this video about this? Um, so maybe you're an entrepreneur and you've grown a business to seven figures or eight figures or whatever that is. Um, that gives you credibility. Like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. Uh, or like for me and my experience with the Gophers, this guy's like, I've caught over 300 gophers in the last two years. Um, like, okay, this guy knows a thing or two about catching gophers. Was this Bill um, Murray's video? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, <laughs> on Caddyshack. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't. But he, 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 I think this was the guy that uh, Bill Murray channeled to, into his character. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> um, and then four is like the solution. Like, what is, what is the answer? What is the answer to the challenge or the problem that people are facing right now? Um, so maybe it's, um, you know, this is their, their five-step formula or their three, uh, or, or their program on how you can grow your business to seven or eight figures, or just in it, you just answer like what you just answer, what is the solution to, to what they're going through? And then finally, uh, this is the, the most important part is the call to action. Um, and this is, I call it build the video around the click. The whole purpose of this video is to get is to invite people to take further action by clicking on the link in the video and going to your website um, and 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 this is your offer right so maybe you have a webinar that go, dives into to the whole training system maybe you have an ebook that people can download or maybe you want people to fill out an application or a free consultation or a free video course that expands upon that 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 problem solution uh, sequence. Um, a phrase I like to use in all of our videos is click the link in this video and download this guide or click the link in the video and get registered for this this training. Um, I think people need to verbally hear what they should do and also visually uh, uh, visually see what they need to do. So we'll put a big, we'll put a big button at the last at the end of the video. Um, inviting people to take further action. Do they need to click? This is such a basic question, but do they need to click on that button, or do they just need to click anywhere within the video screen to take them to your landing page? So back in the day, within the first couple of years that YouTube ads re- launched, you could click anywhere in the screen, and that worked. But then Google got rid of that feature. So now there's only there's only uh, a couple of places that people can click, and one is like the call to action overlay. And that appears in the bottom left corner of the video. Uh, they have YouTube cards that show up in the top right. It's a small little eye in the top right. And they have these end screens um, that show up in the last 20 seconds of the video that you can uh, place uh, anywhere in the screen. Um, I would recommend starting off with the call to action overlay and the end screen. Those two, those two ones work really well. Do those work on mobile? Because I know that the reason why they went from annotations to YouTube cards were because annotations didn't show up on mobile devices. Yep, and that's I mean that's that was for sure. Um, both of those, all three of those, call to actions work on mobile devices, um, and and that was that, that solved a huge problem with mobile. Um, and that I mean within the last within the last year, mobile has performed re- really well in terms of lead generation uh, with YouTube ads. So I 
it, it, it works really well. So I have some experience working with both YouTube cards and annotations. And for those of you who don't know, but basically you take your video, not video ad, but video on YouTube, and there's some tools where you can do some overlays and some neat things like that. Uh, is this similar to that, Jake? Are, are we basically getting our video ad into a tool within YouTube where we can create that button after the fact? Yeah. So, um, the call, yeah, the call to action, we create most of our buttons within ad, within AdWords. Like when okay. you upload you, so in AdWords, you go and you copy and paste your video URL and say, this is the ad I want to show. And then it gives you, you know, where do you want to send people to? You put your URL in there. Um, and you, and, 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 and Google provides all the buttons for you. Now, this may be um, it, silly, but how much control do we have over where that button goes? Because I can envision creating a video where I'm like pointing to something and then it turns out that when I look at the video, that's not actually where the button is. Yep. So there's um, with the call to action overlay and the advertiser link, that's always in the bottom left. You can't control that. With an end screen, you can move it pretty much anywhere within like, the center of the video. Um, but how this relates to shooting your video on your script you brought up a good point. Like you don't want to be clicking somewhere on the screen and have the call to action be like on the other side of the screen. Um, that's why I recommend in, in your, in your verbal call to action, I just say, Hey, click on the link in the video, uh, download this and you know, whatever. But that way you're not uh, giving a specific direction because I mean, platforms are always changing and just from with, with YouTube, especially from annotations to cards to end screens, like, that's always changing. So I just, I, I play it safe and say, there's a link somewhere in this video, click on it and you <laughs> right. can do your thing. And the end screens, is that what you're calling them? Like the 20 seconds of it towards the end? Yeah. So the end screens, they last, you can only, they only last for 20 seconds at the end of the video. Um, and, uh, and you can pretty much place them anywhere you'd like. And are you creating that before you bring it into YouTube or are those tools within AdWords where you can create that uh, end screen? Yes. Good questions. They're, uh, they're only created within on YouTube. So you upload the video to YouTube and you put your end screens there. And then when you build it on an ad, uh, Google will give you additional call to actions that people can, that, that people can click on. So for example, with the end screen, that's only available for the, the last 20 seconds. But when you add a call to action overlay or other advertiser links from the ad platform, those are available throughout the whole video. So uh, those, get a, those tend to get a higher click-through rate than the end screens when it comes to an ad. Sounds good. All right. And any other suggestions? Like, so we get them, we get them to click, they move on to the landing page. A any general advice you have on the landing page, what we should prepare people for, what we should do on that landing page to help increase conversions? Yeah. So usually on your, on your call to action, um, let's, yeah, let's draw, let's link that bridge from the YouTube ad to the landing page. Um, the call to action is like, what is that offer? So maybe it's a, it's a free consultation. Uh, it's a, a, a free video series or video training, whatever that is. Um, but then there's also a huge benefit as to why they should be opted in. So maybe they get 60% off their, their next visit. Um, whatever that call to action is on the end screen, that should match the headline and the action on the landing page. Um, so uh, let's go with the, uh, you know, learn. so if you click on this link, you'll get a free video series. Uh, on how to grow your business to seven figures. They click on it. And then on that landing page, that message should be congruent. So the headline is learn, get the strategy on how we grew our business to eight figures in 10 months or whatever, whatever that, whatever that is. Um, just make sure, make sure that the headline matches the, the call to action. Uh, you want to make sure that the branding stays the same. Uh, if you're like, if your colors are blue and white uh, in the video, make sure that the colors the brand colors are the same on the landing page, um, and uh, and that, that everything's congruent that way. All right, that's some good advice, Jake. This has been fantastic, and I've got a million ideas running through my head right now in terms of how to advertise both for flight and for our clients, but certainly for our annual conference as well. So I definitely want to test some of this stuff out. If people want to find out more about you and your agency online, where can we send them? Go check out videopower.org. 
Um, I've got a ton of free resources there. We got some trainings and you kind of just find out more about how YouTube ads work and, uh, and how you can blow it up. Fantastic. Jake, thank you so much for your time today. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, it's great. It's great being here. Thanks for having me. Okay. There was a lot of good stuff in there and you may not have gotten it all. So did you know that we do a full transcript of every single episode? We did one for this episode too. You can just head on over to the agents of slash 248 for all the links that Jake shared, all the contact information that he shared and a full transcript. So go ahead and do that now. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the information we have about the 7th Annual Agents of Change Conference coming to Portland, Maine on September 20th and 21st. Whether you can be there in person or whether you want to attend virtually, now is the time to grab your ticket while there's still discounts going on. That's all the content we have for now. We'll be back again next week. Talk to you in seven. That wraps up another Agents of Change podcast. Join us next week for another auditory adventure where we tackle search, social, and mobile marketing.